So Sherman Carter Barnhart has been part of a number of pioneering projects, specifically in the state of Kentucky as we look at energy consumption in K-12 education school projects. Uh, when we look at how we've been able to achieve, achieve those uh, energy reductions, there are really six important strategies that we use or employ in these buildings, and you can see those on the screen there. It all starts with site orientation. Uh, back when we did Richardsville Elementary, which is really the grandfather of all the uh, energy reduction that we've been able to achieve, uh, we actually looked at how we orient the building. Uh, it's no longer, it may no longer be proper to orient the building where the front door sits immediately parallel to the road or the street. Uh, we actually looked at ways to orient the building on it on a northwest uh, with north and south facing exposure uh, so that we could get proper orientation into the classrooms, thereby reducing uh, glare and maximizing the amount of daylighting that we could get deep into the instructional spaces. We also look at a high performance building envelope and uh, almost uh, 16 years ago now we introduced insulated concrete forms to the K-12 education uh, building uh, in the state of Kentucky. Uh, if you're not familiar with insulated concrete forms it's actually very similar to a large a styrofoam Lego block uh, that stays in form, stays in place as the concrete form and becomes basically a super insulated uh, exterior envelope that far exceeds uh, kind of comparable building products such as concrete masonry units. Uh, with uh, these building, uh, these high performance building envelopes with the use of insulated concrete forms, we've been able to uh, not only uh, increase our our uh, high performance building envelope and our R value, but also increase uh, the production or decrease the production time and the amount of time that it takes uh, to actually build schools throughout the state of Kentucky, which is a benefit given uh, some of the winters that we experience here in Kentucky. Uh, we also talk about uh, our energy efficient building systems and it's really beyond just the systems themselves but it's really taking a, a new look at the building itself and thinking about building volume, uh, thinking about uh, the, the, uh, building, the, the building footprint and reducing and minimizing that building footprint to really think about the building perimeter and how that building perimeter meets uh, the air around it. Uh, we all know that the, the smaller we can make that building footprint, the better uh, that we can uh, help to reduce our energy consumption. Uh, geothermal is something that we have been using in the state of Kentucky for probably nearly 30 years. Uh, we, we've looked at uh, variable speed heat pumps and we've also looked at taking uh, the heat pumps from the mechanical mezzanine uh, years ago we, we were looking at kind of the typical uh, mezzanine cross section for a school wing. We've taken those heat pumps from that mezzanine, brought them down into a closet that's accessible from the corridor uh, and again is, is still separated from the classroom. Uh, but it allows us to bring that building volume down. And then we also looked at distributive pumping. Back when uh, we first introduced distributive pumping at Plano Elementary in Warren County, we actually experienced a phenomenon uh, because the, uh, the utility company actually couldn't figure out what was going on. Why, why is this building not uh, consuming as much energy as we would expect it to? And uh, that was due in large part to the distributive pumping that was introduced at Plano Elementary. Uh, we also look at outside air ventilation. Uh, dedicated outside air systems. Uh, we also look at uh, heat recovery wheel. Uh, just a number of different strategies there as we look at the fresh air requirements that new buildings uh, require. Uh, we find that oftentimes when we go into older buildings, older buildings are often quite efficient as far as their energy efficiency because they don't have the uh, fresh air requirements that are required by current energy codes. Uh, we also look at uh, daylight harvesting and the strategy here has changed at Richardsville Elementary and you can see this on the screen we used actually long linear clear stories in in the classroom spaces in 
a lot of the instructional spaces to get natural light as deep as we can into the space. Um, now with the introduction and the technology that has advanced with LED light fixtures, we've simplified the daylighting strategy for classroom spaces and uh, gone to almost entirely LED uh, fixtures throughout the building. And again, this helps us reduce our, our uh, building volume and the number of, of holes in our building envelope. Uh, we also looked at uh, rethinking uh, building security and we looked at, uh, we were actually worked with uh, local police and fire and rescue to think about uh, you know what what has to be seen and what doesn't have to be seen uh, from security standpoint at night for instance uh, and we actually introduced for the first time in Warren County Public Schools a dark sky approach in which instead of lighting everything up all night long uh, basically the entire property uh, they actually turn all the lights off. Uh, there are uh, occupancy sensors that are within the building, in the corridors, in some of the, the, uh, the important spaces. And <clears throat> when a, a policeman or someone, a patrolman, uh, drives by, if they see a light on, then they know there's a potential problem. So it's almost the inverse of uh, what we had seen before uh, from a security standpoint. 